during this presentation, I will talk about contested hydropolitical issues in the Nile River Basin. But first, let me share with you some facts about the Nile River. The Nile is the longest river in the world. It flows through northeastern Africa for about 4,132 miles, which is about 6,650 kilometers. The great civilization of ancient Egypt developed on its banks. The most distant sources of the Nile River are rivers that began in Burundi and Rwanda. Those rivers flow into Lake Victoria. From Lake Victoria, the Nile flows through Uganda, South Sudan, and Sudan. For about 500 miles, which is about 800 kilometers in South Sudan and Sudan, the river is called the White Nile. At the city of Khartoum in Sudan, the White Nile is joined by the Blue Nile. Further north, it is joined by the Atabara River. Both the Blue Nile and the Atabara began in the highlands of Ethiopia. The Nile continues to flow north across the deserts of Sudan and Egypt. North of Cairo in Egypt, the Nile enters the region called the Delta. There, it splits into two parts or two branches that flow into the Mediterranean Sea. International rivers such as Nile or such as the Nile are regulated by treaties and conventions. In the Middle East and Africa, those treaties and conventions are often disputed and as a result, they fail to determine or govern rights and obligations over the shared water sources or resources. At the moment, we cannot talk about the Nile River Basin without addressing the Grand Renaissance Ethiopian Dam, which was constructed in 2011 and its first fill took place in August of 2020. The cost of the dam is about $4.8 billion. The dam is owned and operated by the Ethiopian Electric Power Company. The 145 meter tall roller compacted concrete gravity dam will flood 1,874 square kilometer of land at a normal pool elevation of 640 meters and will have a catchment area of about 172,000 square kilometers. However, the pursuit to construct dams in Ethiopia goes back to the 1950s when the empire of Ethiopia, Haile Lassie, asked the United States Bureau of Reclamation to conduct studies and investigations on the best locations for future dams. The scientists and engineers of the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation carried out geological, hydrological, and feasibility studies, and they produced a report in 1964 and suggested several locations for dams and water development projects, and among the best locations was the current location of the Renaissance Dam, which is about 30 kilometers away from the Sudanese border. And at that time, they called the dam the Border Dam, and they suggested a much smaller dam than the current uh, one. In the 90s, the president of Ethiopia, Milau Zinawi, uh, revisited the Empire Dream to develop water projects, and he brought the importance of water issues in the Nile River back to the regional and international scenes, and at that time, the phrase of black gold for blue gold became popular. In the 90s, there was a strong emphasis on the value and the importance of, the, of shared water resources in the basin. However, practical efforts on the dam construction went into dor dormancy, or to be precise, the effort progressed at a very slow rate, mainly due to internal political and economic challenges in the uh, headwater states especially in Ethiopia. Efforts picked up again in 2000, and in particular in 2009, all the feasibility studies of the Renaissance Dam were ready, and in 2010, the engineers completed the design of the dam, and in 2011, an Italian company 
called Selina was con contracted to construct the dam. The finance to build the dam came from many sources, but the majority of the fund came from Chinese loans and from Ethiopian banks, and there was also a private Saudi donation and other sources that financed the dam. But again, the major portion came from China and it was about $2.8 billion and used to purchase turbines, electric power lines, among other needs. $56 million came uh, or were provided from uh, Ethiopians who live abroad and $88 million from a Saudi businessman and the rest of the $4.8 billion came from many different internal Ethiopian uh, sources. The main companies working on the dam projects uh, project are Italians, Chinese, French and German companies. Now the disagreement between the headwater states and the lower reach states resulted from the fact that Egypt and Sudan believe in water historic, historical rights in the Nile River Basin and Ethiopia believe in the equitable and reasonable utilization of water from the basin. Egypt and Sudan believe in the succession principle, which means for them that the treaties and conventions which were signed during the colonial period are still valid, whereas Ethiopia believe in the clean state principle, which means that Ethiopia does not recognize the treaties signed during the colonial period. Both the succession and the clean state principles are, exist actually in the international law. The bottom line of the dispute is that the historical treaties and conventions uh, during the colonial period gave Egypt preeminence in the uh, control of the Nile and its development. Modern Egypt believed that those treaties are still valid, whereas Ethiopia believed that these treaties presented unequal distribution and management uh, of the shared water resources. Many hydropolitical analysts believe that until 1990 or in the nine, until the early 1990s, Egypt played hydro hegemony rule in the river basin on the basis of its historical strength during the colonial period. During the colonial period, there were several treaties that supported Egypt. For example, the 1902 Treaty and the Anglo-Egyptian Treaty and the treaty signed between Egypt and Sudan in 1959. All of these treaties were in favor of Egypt hydro hegemony rule and this basically or this rule influenced donors in many ways, donors for water development projects in the upper reach states and this impacted uh, uh, the headwater states uh, severely in terms of uh, de their water development projects. Uh, over the years, Egypt has used its uh, extensive diplomatic connections and the colonial era 1929 uh, and the 1959 agreements to successfully prevent the construction of any major infrastructure projects on the uh, tributaries of the Nile. As a consequence, Ethiopia has not been able to make significant use of the river's waters. As a result of the ability and willingness of the uh, Ethiopians at home and abroad to invest in the dam project, the government of, of Ethiopia was able to raise a significant portion of the money needed to start the construction of the dam. Now, after the Arab Spring and in 2011, after the separation of uh, South Sudan and the growing rule uh, of uh, Ethiopia and uh, East African countries, Egypt rule in the Nile Basin have weakened. And since Ethiopia believe in the clean state principle, which means that they are not committed to any agreement during the colonial era, and because of that, they acted unilaterally. Uh, it is fair to say that uh, they are now playing the hydro hegemony rule. On the other hand, uh, and due to the uh, rise of environmental, ecological, health and water security issues, 
the Liberian states, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, and Ethiopia worked on the Nile River Basin Initiative, and they presented it as a new framework that can replace the old agreement and conventions, but Egypt and Sudan did not agree. Another important event in the history of the dispute over the Nile River Basin is the NTB Agreement. In May 2010, the headwater states suggested a new allocation and water sharing schemes that terminates the historical rights of Egypt and Sudan as per the 1929 and 1950 uh, treaties. This sparked political dispute and negotiation, and I can summarize the round of negotiations to settle the dispute over the water river in four major periods. The first round was from 2011 to 2013. During this round, an international technical committee was formed to look at the technical issues related to the dam, related to the dam construction, such as the environmental impact statement and associated risks. The dam construction activities during this period did not stop. Some Egyptian and Sudanese uh, analysts believe that the environmental impact statement of the dam pointed out or point out to many environmental and physical risks and that the impact also or the dam will impact the Aswan Dam in Egypt and the hydroelectric power project associated with Aswan Dam. But this could be debatable. Now the second round took place from 2014 until 2015. During this round, Egypt and uh, Ethiopia agreed on sets of general guiding principles during the African summit. And uh, the African summit uh, uh, took place in 2014. The signing on these uh, principles and the declaration took place in March 2015 and in Sudan. After the signing, Ethiopia obtained approval from Egypt and Sudan on the dam uh, construction. Now, the third, the third round took place from 2016 until uh, 2019. And during this uh, round of negotiation, the uh, discussions and uh, the debate and negotiations focused on the operation and filling of the dam. During this round of negotiation, Ethiopia rejected an Egyptian proposal to jointly operate and finance the project. The fourth round took place from 2019 until, uh, 20, until 2020. Uh, during this round, the United States and International Monetary Fund intervened to prevent political conflicts among the parties, but uh, Ethiopia pulled out of the discussion. And uh, during this uh, uh, round, several other political uh, files were opened. For example, the humanitarian crisis in the Tigray region, of Ethiopia and during that time also the United States cut about 100 million dollar in aid to Ethiopia and this was during the uh, President Trump term and later on the US uh, uh, delinked Ethiopian aid uh, uh, pause from dam policy. To make the long story short the US intervention was not successful after that Egypt and Sudan took the issue United uh, Nations Security Council, but uh, no resolution have been uh, issued, and the issue were referred to the African uh, uh, Union. Egypt and Sudan wants legally binding agreement. Ethiopia believe that uh, the 215 uh, principles are sufficient and provide means for negotiation and mediation. Uh, due to this dispute, Ethiopia has proceeded unilaterally to utilize uh, the Blue Nile and the Ethiopian unilateral action for uh, hydraulic and hydrologic, hydrological or hydrogeological development in the basin is supported by the equitable and no harm water usage principle. Now for Egypt, the Nile River is not just water security issue, but rather a national security issue because Egypt relies 97% of its water needs uh, on the Nile River water. And most recently, the presidents of Egypt warned uh, of the risk of conflict over the Ethiopians' Renaissance Dam 
on the Blue Nile after talks involving the two countries and Sudan. Unfortunately, the talks ended without progress, and the president indicated that all options are possible, and analyst does not exclude the military option. The declared Ethiopian position over extended years of negotiations is to divide the issues uh, into phases and adopt a piecemeal approach. I believe that uh, this approach would uh, give the three countries, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan, time to build the trust. And I think that uh, the negotiation should focus on a win-win approach and not a zero-sum approach. Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia agreed on several points that can serve as a common ground to build the trust. All the parties believe that fair projects will bring peace, progress, and trade. But the filling and operation of the dam during the drought uh, seasons are still a challenge. A German proposal suggested that during drought time, Ethiopia should release sufficient amount of water to Egypt and the financial uh, losses as a result of that uh, release should be compensated from fund supported by the European countries and the Arabian Gulf countries. I think part of this fund should also finance technical solutions for efficient uh, utilization of the basin uh, water resources and should provide means for creating a more conducive political culture for dialogue and innovation and also should develop, maintain and enhance stable institutional and legal uh, setup and associated mechanisms. The German proposal is expected to provide enabling environment to transform the cooperation proposals and technical solutions into reality, into reality on the ground, as well as will turn conflict into collaboration. I hope I was able to summarize the history, root cause, uh, and the way forward of the dispute in the Nile River Basin. Thank you very much.